Welcome back. In this video, I will discuss how can we apply radial basis function to classify non-linearly separable data with the help of simple solved example. In this case, I will be considering the XOR Boolean function to understand the radial basis function. The XOR Boolean function contains four patterns 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1. The radius is given to us that is R is equal to 1.414. We need to construct the radial basis function so that we can classify the XOR Boolean function correctly. That is whenever the pattern is equal to 0, 0 or 1, 1, the output should be equal to 0. In all other cases, the output should be equal to 1 over here. In this case, I uh, will be considering the following radial basis function neural network, which contains one input layer, one output layer, one hidden layer here. The input layer contains two neurons, the output layer contains one neuron and the hidden layer contains four neurons in this particular case. Now, once you define the hidden layer neurons, so what we need to do is we need to assign a radial basis function for each of those particular hidden layer neurons. So, in this case, I will be considering the Gaussian radial basis function here. If you want to consider the multi-quadratic radial basis function, yes, you can use that particular thing also. So, for each of these particular hidden layer neurons, we need to define the neurons. Uh, in the first case, h1 x is equal to e raised to minus x minus c1 bracket square divided by r square, where x is the input, c1 is the center and r is the radius here. So, for first neuron, I will be considering 0, 0 as the center here. Similarly, for the second one, uh, C2 will be the center, uh, that is the only change over here and C2 is equal to 0, 1. Similarly, for th third and fourth neuron, C3 and C4 were the centers with 1, 0 and 1, 1 as the values here. Once you define these particular uh, hidden layer neurons, next we need to understand how to calculate this particular numerator value, that is x minus C1 bracket square. So, this is uh, uh, calculated with the help of uh, Euclidean distance formula. Let us say that we have uh, two data points x1, y1 and x2, y2. If you want to calculate the distance between them, that is uh, distance square is always equal to x2 minus x1 bracket square plus y2 minus y1 bracket square. This is a standard uh, Euclidean formula we have. With the help of this particular formula, we can calculate this particular numerator. The denominator is already given to us. R is equal to 1.414. R square is equal to 2 in this particular case here. Now, uh, we will try to apply the one input at a time and then we will try to classify that particular input into one of the class over here. The first input pattern is equal to 0, 0 uh, and uh, the first uh, can say that uh, the center is equal to uh, 0, 0 over here. So, what we need to do is uh, uh, we need to calculate the distance uh, from this particular 0, 0 that is the input pattern to the first center here. So, how can we calculate that particular distance? 0 minus 0 bracket square plus 0 minus 0 bracket square which is equal to 0 here. That is the numerator. Denominator is equal to what? 2 in this case. So, h1 of x is equal to e raised to minus 0 divided by 2 which is equal to 1.0 here. Now, from this particular input pattern, we need to calculate the distance to the second uh, hidden layer neuron. The center for the second hidden layer neuron is equal to c2 which is equal to 0, 1. Now, if you want to calculate the distance, that is uh, this 0 minus 0 bracket square plus 0 minus 1 bracket square which is equal to 1 in this case. Now, the numerator will become 1 divided by 2 which is equal to 0.6 in this case. Similarly, we need to calculate the distance from this particular input pattern to the third centroid uh, center here that is nothing but 1 comma 0. Once you solve this particular thing, it will become 0 minus 1 bracket square plus 0 minus 0 bracket square. Again, it is equal to 1. And if we solve this particular H3 of x, you will get 0.6 here. Similarly, for H4 of x, we will get 0.4 in this case. Now, what we did is we calculated the output for each of those particular hidden layer neurons here. Now, once you get the output for those particular hidden layer neurons, we need to calculate the output at the output layer neurons. That is nothing but the weight multiplied by the output at hidden layer neurons here. Now, if you go back and see this particular uh, diagram, the weights are already initialized randomly minus 0 0.8, minus uh, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, again minus 0 0.8 over here. So, the output of this particular neuron multiplied by this particular weight plus the output of this neuron multiplied by this weight and so on you will be getting the output at this particular output layer neuron here. So, that is what I have written in this particular step here. The output is equal to minus 0.8 that is weight. The output is how much in the first case? It is 1.0. The 0.9 is the weight, 0.6 is the output here. 
similarly 0 0.9 is the weight output is equal to 0 0.6 here minus 0 0.8 is the weight and output is equal to what 0 0.4 here once you solve this particular thing you will get minus uh, 0 0.04 in this case similarly what we do is we will consider the second input pattern now that is 0 1 uh, from this particular uh, input pattern we will calculate the distance to each of these particular centroid as done in the previous step and then we will calculate the output at this particular hidden layer neurons here now if you look at these particular outputs the first one is 0.6 second one is 1.0 third one is uh, 0.4 and the fourth one is equal to 0.6 here again we need to use uh, the formula to calculate the output at the output layer neuron that is nothing but the weight multiplied by the output at the hidden layer neuron here the weights are already known to us minus 0 0.8 for the first one the output is equal to 0 0.6 here uh, weight is 0 0.9 the output is equal to 1.0 that is what I have written here minus uh, 0.9 is the weight and then 0.4 is the output here minus 0 0.8 multiplied by the output once you solve this particular equation you will get 0 0.3 as the value for this particular uh, second uh, uh, can say that uh, uh, input the output is uh, 0.3 for the second input pattern here similarly we will do it for the third input pattern that is 1 comma 0 uh, here again we need to calculate h1x h2x h3x and h4x uh, with the same note what we did in the previous two steps and then we need to use this particular weight multiplied by output of the hidden layer so that you will get the output at the output layer neuron here in this case again we are getting the value as 0.3 in this case the same thing will be followed for the fourth input pattern that is uh, 1 comma 1 uh, we will get h1 of uh, x is equal to 0 0.4 h2 of x is equal to 0.6 h3 of x is equal to 0.6 and h4 of x is equal to 1.0 now once you use this particular formula you will get the output at the output layer neuron uh, which is equal to minus 0 0.04 over here now same thing i have represented in this particular table uh, what is uh, h1x h2x h3x and h4x for each of these particular inputs and the output at the output layer neuron in this case now if you look at this particular value which is less than 0 the meaning of this one is the output will be equal to 0 here again this particular thing is less than 0 that's the reason the output will be equal to 0 here in the remaining two cases the output uh, at the output layer neuron is greater than 0 that is the reason the output is equal to 1 1 in this case so that is what we are expecting in this case whenever the input is equal to 0 0 and 1 1 we are expecting 0 0 as the value in all other cases the output should be equal to 1 over here so the meaning of this one is the expected value we are getting here so there is no need to go back and update the weights here because in uh, radial basis function what we need to do here is once you get that particular output if the output is satisfactory you can stop here because whatever we are expecting in this particular numerical we are getting the same thing here with this particular weights here so there is no need to update this particular weights if you are not getting the results as expected we need to use back propagation algorithm and then we need to update this particular weights here so once you update this particular weights next what we need to do is we need to calculate the output at the output layer neuron again we need to check whether the result is as expected or not if it is expected we can stop over there otherwise we need to go back and modify this particular weights here the same thing has to be repeated unless and until you get this particular outputs in this particular case so this is how actually we can apply the radial basis function for the given uh, patterns so that we can map it to the output patterns over here i hope the concept of radial basis function is clear if you like the video do like and share with your friends press the subscribe button for more videos press the bell icon for regular updates thank you for watching